The other thing in the national interest is uh, this security focus from Mike Burgess and co at ASIO with the, the upgrade in the terror alert level. It's been a couple of years after the COVID pandemic where it was downgraded, now up again. It seems, talking to Dennis Richardson today uh, and others around this space, that ASIO has never had a tougher job, Chris, given the difficulties around online radicalisation. Yeah, Kieran, they can't possibly know really where the next threat might come from. They talk now about politically motivated violence, moving away from that language of religiously motivated violence. Now, I put a caveat around that and saying that Sunni extremism still is the biggest concern that you would have in terms of a terror attack in Australia. But in terms of someone going rogue and, and taking to a schoolroom, as we saw in the UK, with a knife, how could you possibly know what younger people are doing on mine, online? What it is that's radicalising them? I see that Anthony Albanese has talked about one case where someone was being influenced by the extremes of both left and right at the same time. So there's a very muddled picture. ASIO will do its best to try and keep on top of that, but but expecting that the, the intelligence agencies would know where the next attack would come from if that's where it's coming from, someone being radicalised in a bedroom, deciding that one day they'll get, a, they'll get a kitchen knife and wander into a classroom and kill school children. It is a terrifying time on that front, uh, Kieran, and I do feel for the intelligence agencies that are trying to keep a lid on it. The Iranian ambassador not helping anyone really with that language. He's uh, tweeted in recent days and talk about saying we need to tone things down a bit. This is this is inflammatory if uh, if ever we've seen it, Chris. Yeah, Kieran, and we need to keep fairly sharp focus on what the trouble is in the Middle East and the real trouble and where it often comes from is Iran. It is a malign government which spreads its malign influence all through the Middle East. And, of course, now the big concern is what Hezbollah, the Hezbollah might do uh, in Lebanon against the state of Israel. The last thing any of us wants to see is a wider war in the Middle East. What we do want to see is the fight in Gaza come to an end as quickly as it possibly can do. But, of course, these threats loom because Iran's influence is what's driving so much of the violence in that part of the world. We shouldn't lose sight of that. And, Kieran, look, I just came from, from Europe. One of the things that strikes me mm. is the security in every single city I visited, Prague or be it uh, Vienna or whether or not it was, it was in the north of Italy, the security around... Uh, the, the Jewish um, synagogues was everywhere. The police blocking off streets so that people would be safe. The real threat in Europe at the moment yeah. is to those people who are of the Jewish faith from extremists that are driven by ideologies that come out of places like Iran. So the Iranian ambassador, well, they'll call him in. No doubt they'll, they'll call him over the carpet. I doubt it will change the, the, the views of him or anyone in his government at all. The, uh, the other issue I wanted to talk to you about, I know you've been in Europe, you were in the United States just before that, and obviously keeping an eye on how that race is unfolding, the extraordinary developments of recent weeks, and Harris now, uh, it seems almost neck and neck when it comes to Trump in the polls. Yes, you certainly given the Democrats a bounce and a bit of a spring in their step. I will say, though, that when I was in Washington, it was while that debate was live as to whether or not the president was going to stand aside. And I think that Kamala Harris, in the end, was the only choice that the Democrats had. There were a certain number of fears, and one of those fears were, was that if they bypassed her and tried to go to an open race, was that she would bring the entire show down. So I think the easiest path in the end for the Democrats was the path of least resistance. It's given them a bounce in the short run. Let's see how they go in the long run, because don't forget that Camilla Harris was responsible for yeah. the borders in the United States, and they have been a terrible disaster. So you'd want to see these poll numbers continue for some time. The debate will be fascinating. The age question is now Trump's to answer, and I think that she will present a much sharper focus, because, boy, you couldn't get a kind of a more fuzzy one than we saw in the last debate. So uh, it will be a better contest for the United yeah. States and that means a better contest for the rest of us. Yeah, indeed. And sometimes when there are negative opinions of, of a leader, um, it sometimes counterintuitively it can be a, a positive for them when they're actually in the job, Chris, because they exceed those low expectations. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it unfolds with the debate and beyond. Thank you, as always. Appreciate it now.